All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about autoimmune disorders and immunodeficiency. Um, and this is a continuation of the PowerPoint from last time. We're going to start from slide 20. But um, there is a, a big section in the book on AIDS, which is great, um, HIV and AIDS. Um, but part of your um, education training, you have to take um, the healthcare workers training on AIDS. So I'm not going to go into it a lot because you're going to get a lot more of that in that particular training. So I'm just going to hit the high points, basically. So an autoimmune disorder occurs when the immune system can't distinguish between self and non-self antigens. Um, they don't know what causes it. So, but basically, your body loses the ability to tell yourself from not yourself. Um, it, and you develop antib antibodies against your own cells or tissues. So an autoimmune disorder can affect a single organ or a particular type of tissue, or it can be generalized. So lots of different autoimmune disorders, uh, lots of different diseases are autoimmune disorders. Um, so ones that affect single organs or tissues, like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, affects just the thyroid. Um, lupus, or systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE, you'll see it called, um, affects more tissues in the body. It's more generalized. Um, rheumatic fever, myasthenia gravis, scleroderma, pernicious anemia, and hyperthyroidism affect specific areas. And we'll talk about each of those individual little ones when it's re a relevant time to do it. For example, we'll talk about the thyroiditis and the um, Graves' disease when we're talking about the endocrine system. We'll talk about um, rheumatic fever when we're talking about the cardiovascular system. We'll talk about myasthenia gravis in um, neuro when we're talking about the nervous system. And um, we'll talk about uh, SLE right now. <laughs> so self-antigens are usually tolerated by the immune system, and there's no reaction to your own antigens. So when you lose your self-tolerance, the immune system is unable to differentiate yourself from foreign material. So the autoantibodies trigger an immune reaction lead, leading to inflammation and necrosis of tissue. So um, there might be something that triggers it, but there might be nothing that triggers it. Um, with a lot of the different autoimmune disorders, genetic factors appear to be involved. So, um, and you'll see um, things that run in families. So lupus, or SLE, is a chronic inflammatory disease. Um, it affects lots of different symptoms, and therefore it is difficult to diagnose and treat. Um, there are some things that are characteristic of it. Um, the name of it is derived from the characteristic facial rash, which is um, erythem um, erythematous. <laughs> And it's basically the butterfly rash across the um, nose and cheeks. So the reason they call it lupus is because it resembles the uh, markings of a wolf. Lupus is the Latin word for wolf. So now they talk, they call the rash a butterfly rash, the way it's distributed. And it was originally called the wolf rash. Um, it primarily affects young women. Um, it's sort of becoming better known and cases are getting identified earlier, which improves your prognosis. Um, there's higher incidence in African Americans, Asians, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So um, some, sometimes it's usually um, manifest between the ages of 10 and 50, so that's a pretty broad age range. And they really haven't established a specific cause, but it, it appears to be multifactorial, uh, which a lot of autoimmune disorders are multifactorial, and it includes genetic, hormonal, and environmental factors. So there's not a single lupus gene that's been identified, but genes increasing susceptibility to autoimmune disorders have been identified. So um, the more we find out about this stuff, the better. Right? So this is the characteristic rash 
Um, so w what happens in um, lupus, the pathophysiology of lupus, is you get a large number of circulating autoantibodies against DNA, your own DNA, your own platelets, and your own erythrocytes and other um, nucleic acids and nuclear materials. So immune complexes, um, especially those with anti-DNA antibodies, are depositive in connective tissue anywhere in the body, which activates the complement system and causes inflammation and necrosis. This sounds familiar, doesn't it? Um, vasculitis, which is inflammation of the blood vessels, develops in many organs, which impairs blood supply to the tissues. So it results in ischemia, um, which is inadequate oxygenation of cells, and it leads to further inflammation and destruction of tissue. So the process usually takes place in several different organs or tissues, but common sites include the kidneys, lungs, heart, brain, skin, joints, and digestive system. That's a lot of systems, right? So because it affects so many symptoms, Signs and symptoms vary, um, but you can get, diagnosis is usually based on the presence of um, multiple system involvement, a minimum of four areas, and laboratory data showing the presence of autoantibodies. So they can be present for many years before the first symptoms appear. Um, even though there are lots of variations because of different organ involvement, they commonly include arthralgia. Algia means pain, arth is joint, so it's joint pain, fatigue and malaise, cardiovascular problems, and polyuria, which is frequent urination. Um, the diagnostic test is testing for antibodies in the blood, um, testing for what they call LE cells, um, which are mature neutrophils um, containing nuclear material in the blood. That's a positive sign. And um, there are low levels of complement proteins because they're getting used up. And the erythrocyte sedimentation rate is high, indicating an inflammatory response. So that erythrocyte sedimentation rate um, is a way that they detect an inflammatory response. We talked about that in the inflammation chapter. So when you have a high, a high ESR, something's going on, but then they need other, um, other pieces of the puzzle to diagnose lupus. It's usually treated, diagnosed and treated by a rheumatologist. Um, it's often, um, depending on the, spe uh, the specific symptoms and the severity of symptoms, it's often treated with prednisone, which is a glucocorticoid, to reduce the immune response and reduce inflammation. And it can also be treated with... Um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So sometimes you'll have high doses of the glucocorticoids during an exacerbation or periods of stress, but then they reduce the dose when the patient's in remission to minimize the side effects. So um, in the book they have, of course, there's a really um, cool picture of the LE cell, um, which is a diagnostic. Um, it's that um, altered uh, neutrophil, basically. Um, there are a few other drugs, um, the anti-malarial drug that, um, is, uh, quinine, it, or it's uh, derived from that, um, appears to reduce exacerbations, which is kind of interesting. Um, so some, they're looking for, um, drugs that block specific B lymphocyte response to antigens, which reduces antibody formation. So really kind of interesting. So um, people try to minimize exacerbations by avoiding aggravating factors, by tr promptly treating acute episodes, avoidance of sun exposure and excessive fatigue helps prevent flare-ups. Um, and so the warning signs of that an exacerbation is coming on, um, or a flare, people will call it, um, include increased fatigue, rash, pain, fever, and headache. So the the prognosis for SLE is hugely improved now with early diagnosis and careful treatment. So um, that's awesome. You can, uh, there's a lot better treatment and better diagnosis now.
So um, in this table, which is table 7.7, .7, it talks about how it affects all those different systems, which I think is um, huge. So immunodeficiency, by definition, is um, immunity. It's the body's capacity to fight foreign substance. Immunodeficiency is a compromised or lack of immune response. So it can be a partial or total loss of one or more immune system components. Um, when you have immunodeficiency, you have increased risk of infection and cancer because your natural killer cells in the immune system um, get rid of tumor cells before they become cancerous. So there can be, um, with immunodeficiency, it results from a loss of function in one or more components of the um, immune system. So primary deficiencies involve basic developmental failure somewhere in the system. So bone marrow isn't producing um, stem cells, or there's a problem in the thymus, or in the synthesis of antibodies. So that's your primary, the basic failure somewhere in the system. Um, secondary immunodeficiency or acquired immunodeficiency is the loss of immune response from specific causes. So it can be caused by infection, getting a splenectomy, like say that you're surfing and you have a, hu you have a huge crash and you um, get a spleen rupture and you have to get your spleen removed. That can cause secondary immunodeficiency. Malnutrition, liver disease, immunosuppressant drugs, radiation or chemotherapy can also cause immunodeficiency. So um, the... When you are immunodeficient, you are predisposed to the development of opportunistic infections caused by normal flora. And it's usually difficult to treat because you're immune deficient. So a lot of times they use um, antimicrobial drugs prophylactically um, prior to invasive procedures just to help prevent um, potential um, immune system problems. But um, immunodeficiency is a... Um, a rough thing to deal with. So AIDS is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome and it's caused by um, the human immunodeficiency virus HIV. Um, we are not going to go into the specifics um, in this because you are going to hear much more of this in your HIV specific education. So you can look through the rest of the PowerPoint um, and look through the information in the book but I'm not going to go into specifics on HIV, and I'm also not going to test you on HIV because, again, you're going to get that in another course.